Hey guys, this is Army Veteran Chris Chaos here. Uh, wrong, wrong video. Sorry, this is Nikki. I'm on Chris's channel. No biggie. We're just collaborating. I'm not taking over the Army to... I'm, I can only handle covering one branch, Chris. What's up, friends? Welcome to an all-new video. I'm your Army Veteran Christopher Chaos, and in this video... I gathered up a few awesome military content creators to help me out and do a fun little collaboration and kind of break up some things during this whole craziness of everything going on in the world right now. So, awesome individuals that are joining me in this video. We have some Army individuals as well as some Navy individuals, so it's military in general. Hopefully, if you guys know these guys, if you don't, I'll have links down in the description for all of their YouTube channels, so definitely, definitely check these individuals out. But we have a couple Army recruiters. We have from Team Swartz, we have Sergeant Swartz himself. First and foremost, thank you so much, Chris, for inviting me onto your channel. Christopher Chaos, I've been a huge fan of your channel for quite some time, and uh, you pump out a lot of great videos, and I am honored and privileged to be invited to your channel to share my experience thus far dealing with COVID-19. Those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Sergeant First Class Swartz, your local New York Army National Guard recruiter, conveniently located in New York City, which is the hottest spot in the country right now with COVID-19. I don't know if that's something I should be bragging about, but yeah. We also have Army recruiter, otherwise you may know him as R. Chisel. All right, test mic, one, two, three, okay. And over on the Navy side, we have, of course, Nikki MGTV. Listen here, Chris, take some notes. You need a desk like this. You need to look official. Have a computer in the video. That way it looks official. This mixing board, I used to use it, but it kept causing my audio to go in and out. But have it here. It's just a prop now. Just kidding, it's for, for podcasts and stuff. I, I like to use it for that, but. And then we also have Austin Alexander. What's up, y'all? First of all, I have a pretty nice studio in there, but my girlfriend is doing her college work, but I guess that's more important than this video. So for now, I'm out on the patio. This is my quarantined view. Got uh, the pool as well as some decent scenery. We have grills over there. So I blasted out five quarantine or isolation type of questions to these individuals for them to answer. If you want to play along, you can answer them down below. I'll be answering them as well and giving my input. So we'll have a little bit of fun with these questions for maybe some of you that are maybe on isolation, on quarantine. Maybe some of you are in essential jobs and still have to work as some of these individuals in this video still have to do so as well. For me personally, I don't have to actually go to work. I'm working from home right now, which is a little bit challenging, trying to get some work done during the day while taking care of my daughter because her daycare is closed and the girlfriend is at work because she is in an essential job that she still has to show up to work. So it's a little bit of a challenge. But nonetheless, let's have a little bit of fun and uh, we'll answer some fun little quarantine or isolation related questions. When was the last time you were around more than 10 people, not counting a grocery store and what were you doing? Work. Believe it or not. Yeah, uh, I work in medical, as many people understand that. So uh, I do have to be around more than 10, 10 people at a time uh, in our clinic. So realistically, you know, I would say if you're talking about close proximity, yeah, we have to do huddles and stuff, but we try and maintain social distancing when we do that. But overall, I'm going to say work is primarily where I see most people. I avoid grocery stores, by the way, in the commissary and everything. So I usually stay home right here where you guys see me filming. So for me, when this all first started, on Saturday the 14th, I went out to Fort Dix, New Jersey to qualify with my rifle to be able to meet the Joe Sergeant Academy requirement of qualifying within the last six months because I was supposed to go to the Joe Sergeant Academy and report on the 1st of April, which is tomorrow, which sadly isn't happening. So long story short, I shook hands with a soldier who shook hands of the soldier who eventually uh, caught and confirmed COVID-19. So how that happened is, I shook hands with my soldier on Saturday who shook hands with the other soldier who on Sunday the next day got a call that his roommate tested positive for COVID-19 and was in the hospital. They immediately quarantined that soldier at Fort Dix in the hotel. Everyone else was sent home to self-quarantine. When I got home on Sunday, I went out and tried to buy a bunch of items to stock up to follow the governor's orders and the president's orders to basically self-isolate and to do social distancing and such. So that Wednesday, I think it was the 19th, we got the call that that soldier at Fort Dix was in fact confirmed positive for COVID-19 and by the command um, 
advisement mandated me to self quarantine until today, March 31st. So tomorrow, April 1st, I will be off of self quarantine by the guidance of my command and I can continue to process applicants as a recruiter from that point forward. We had an all hands meeting probably about a month and a half ago at work talking about the health condition that we're going to have to go into for base. And that's probably, there's probably 15 people in there. So that's the last time I was around 10 people. It was March 13, 2020, because I have put in my leave for March 16, all the way up to March 30th, because it was my wife's birthday, our anniversary, and pretty much spring break, because the kids are going to be out of school. So I turned in my leave around August or September 2019. And you know how the military works, you know how the army works. You got to turn in your DA-31 ahead of time. And I did do that, but coronavirus, COVID-19 outbreak, and this is what happened. So pretty much March 13, 2020 was the last time I was around a lot of people. So for me, it would have been around mid-March. I was still at work. Uh, it was right around the time when President Trump had issued that they didn't want people in more than groups of 10 or didn't recommend that. And uh, we had a big meeting with everybody at my work probably had about like 40 or 50 people in one room while they put out all this information about everything that was happening and what the plan was for work and everything. We weren't yet shut down from the installation to start working from home yet. So we were still kind of taking it day by day, but we had this big meeting with a bunch of people in a room. And that was the last time I was around more than, more than 10 people other than certain situations like a grocery store or something. Our next question here is how many rolls of toilet paper do you have? Chris, let me go check one second. That's actually funny because I have it right here. I have about, how many rolls are these? 30 rolls from Costco. So I was able to cop, I was able to purchase a whole package of toilet paper before the craziness happens. And I probably have around 35 rolls of toilet paper because we have another roll prior to all these craziness that we bought months ago. So this, will last me probably until the end of 2020. I have that thick, luxurious toilet paper that I don't know about you, I don't like thick and luxurious toilet paper. I'm more of a thousand sheets Scott's toilet paper kind of guy myself. So I'm down to 1.5 rolls. So thank God I will be off of self quarantine and will be able to go to the store on my own behalf to purchase additional supplies. Everyone else has been kind enough to bring stuff to me because I'm not supposed to leave my house. I did leave twice to go jogging for self, uh, self PT basically. I, I'm not allowed to be around other people obviously, but the governor did say that we can leave our house and do solitary PT. All right, Chris. All right, Chris, 18 right here, but I actually have another pack of these. I couldn't carry this. So that's 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, my, my dog ate that one, sorry. 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. And the one that's on the roll, I guess you could count that as 48. I have too much toilet paper, dude. What the? <laughs> but backstory to this, I have a true backstory. Chris, don't judge me. I have a backstory to this. This isn't. I was not, this is all purchased before everything that we even uh, got. So let me give you the backstory on this. I do have a lot of toilet paper, but the reason why I have a lot of toilet paper is because Justine used to work at the commissary. Now, she would know about the latest and greatest deals. And if you look at all the coupons that you get and all that kind of stuff, um, she is a big coupon person and was able to get a ton of really good quality toilet paper for very, very cheap. Um, and also here in the, the overseas basis, we do get a lot of coupons cut out and given to us that you can grab from the commissary and they're allowed to be used up to six months after they expire. So um, that's why we have a lot of toilet paper. I could show you guys also a ton of the soaps. Um, the paper towels. So all those kind of kind of things that are kind of household items, we bought a bunch of those and I've never bought toilet paper because Justine's bought all this toilet paper. I literally don't think we're going to go through this for the rest of the year pretty much because it's just us. Right now I have two toilet papers and Sarah's mad. I just did a giveaway on Instagram. I gave away 10 rolls of toilet paper and Sarah's mad that I did that. So we have two right now trying to make it, trying to survive. Sometimes I just use my hand though. 
Uh, that was a joke. So I actually have about 20 rolls and that wasn't because I really prepared that well. It was actually because uh, prior to my girlfriend coming back from California back in January, I went shopping to get supplies before her and my daughter came back to the house. And one of the things I bought was a big uh, thing of toilet paper because I thought we were almost out, but I actually still had quite a bit that I didn't realize that I had in the garage. So uh, we've had that since January, so we're still pretty good. I still got like 20 rolls. What are, outside of your must have stay alive items, what other must have items do I want or need for me to be in isolation during this time frame? I am a social creature. I know this. I need love and affection. I need attention. I need something to interact with. That's just how I am. All right. So Chris, welcome to the Noxie show. This is Noxie. He is my dog. I've got another one, but he's not up here, but I need these guys. Literally. I'm not telling you, like I would take him cause he's more of a cuddle buddy. But other than that, I'm just going to say like, honestly, pets, that's just how I am. I love my dogs. If anyone knows me, I love my dogs. Great. My other dog's coming up here. Come here. You want to be on the camera too? Let Meet Mr. Chaos. Come here. Come here. Meet. So there's Obi right there. This is our younger one, right? I know. Can I, t can I take both of them? I want, we're going to count dog parentheses S. I feel like it's the same for a lot of us, probably a computer. I function well when I have a computer. I can you can pretty much do anything. You can learn anything. You can go to you know listen to audiobooks, watch YouTube, you can learn any type of skill. Everything that I've learned how to do in life pretty much has been off of YouTube and instructional videos and Google. So considering I have internet with the laptop, that's the one thing that I would say I must have. I think cell phone is considered a must have but probably video games and my laptop. Those are really like a must have, must have like a cell phone, but those are the things that I must have because I'll get super bored. I mean, there's so much that you can do, work out, hang out with the family, but sometimes you need time with yourself which is playing video games, watching a movie, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, using a laptop, which is kind of like similar to a phone technically. I've been training my whole life. I'm an introvert. I don't like large crowds, so I'm good. I've been training this for my whole freaking life, bro. But all I need is my camera, my laptop, access to the internet, and my cell phone. And as long as there's internet access and the ability to create videos and have fun doing that, because that's my hobby, I'm straight. So those are my must-haves. Well, if you don't know me, I must have Rockstar. I have been stocking up on Rockstar. Uh, I, once a week, we'll hit up our local gas station to go and get about five of these. That way I have them at least during the week and everything like that and uh, kind of resupply. So if the gas station all of a sudden runs out of Rockstars, we're, we're probably gonna have some issues, guys. Other than that, as long as I have the internet, uh, I'm pretty good. Question number four, favorite thing to do if you can't leave the house? I guess the best answer for that is hanging out and staying with the family. I got a brand new uh, baby boy got a seven-year-old daughter, the wife, the dog. Uh, that's pretty much it, just hanging out because this is actually a lot of time that I've been given to be with my family under a not so good type of circumstance and a lot of craziness happening in the world, but pretty much staying with the family and take a long ass nap, sleep all day <laughs> if there's really nothing much to do or nothing needs to get done. I like learning new things. So I, I couldn't leave the house back in January, I had a surgery. And I was on the computer, I learned how to trade stocks. I learned how to trade stock options. And it's crazy the things you can learn, like I was saying before in the last question, it's crazy the things you can learn when you have lots of time to do so. And like I'm sitting here now, I'm off on a Tuesday, thank goodness, and I've pretty much been on the computer all day answering emails and learning stuff. I learned how to broadcast live on YouTube and Facebook using DSLR cameras. So just random things you need to know how to do in life. I feel like the internet and a computer is good to do that. Uh, obviously, other than obviously creating videos for YouTube kind of a thing, I like spending time with my daughter, with my girlfriend. Uh, that's definitely fun. If I get a chance, you know, playing some video games, playing a little Call of Duty maybe, uh, catching up on other people's YouTube videos and just kind of surfing the internet. So outside of video creation, I do PT in my house and due to the fact that I am a single parent, I'm a recruiter, I have a busy life, I'm prepar preparing for the Joe Sarton Academy, I need short and effective workouts and I've been doing kettlebell training for almost two months now and man, those things are amazing. You should try them out. 
freaking amazing. It's it, it's just awesome. But yeah, I work out with kettlebells, calisthenics. I got a pull-up bar, jump rope. I don't even need to leave the house. So for those that want to join the military right now, or maybe they're delayed from shipping out to basic training or their initial training, and they want to join the military, what should you be doing in the meantime until you can actually join? I know you guys have been training hard. For those of you that are going into the military, you've been training hard, you know, you're gonna join, you're like, oh, my date's in April, and it's been pushed back now. I get it, but you have to keep up with your physical fitness. It's a huge part of the military. It's a huge part of life, in my opinion. So stay on top of your game, whatever it is that you are doing to pass that initial PFA or that made you confident enough to go into boot camp. that's what you need to be doing. No off days, don't take it easy. Don't be like, oh, we're gonna be in this quarantine for 10 months, I might as well sit around and get fat and eat chips and salsa. No, don't do it. Have some discipline, train your body, train your mind, and be prepared when the time comes. Because when the time comes, they're probably gonna slap a date on you that's gonna be a lot sooner than you expected. So always stay ready. Chris, I released a video about this today. Stop stealing my content. I'm kidding, no. Uh, I'm gonna tell you this. Um, I'm a believer in controlling what you can control because I've dealt with issues, my own internal issues of freaking out or having anxiety over things I can't control. So over what you can't control, honestly, studying up, watching the videos, getting more immersed in the culture. If I, if you can learn anything and realize that you have more at your disposal now to study to get better for basic training or just anything in the military, just learning more about it, um, I think you're, you're going to do far better off. And I don't know if people realize, but the, the learning curve that we're helping a lot of these guys out at, it's giving that one extra step up to be like, I kind of what the military is about now. Uh, whereas when you joined and I joined, there was none of this. So um, I'm glad to make the content. And I'm not saying that just to watch our content, but watch Chris, watch whoever, um, because we're not the only voice. And I truly believe that our family here on YouTube that makes content relevant to the military uh, definitely has its place in, in the military sphere and we're growing and we're getting stronger and we're getting a lot of great uh, different perspectives. My recommendation is just trying to stay fit, right? Try to get motivated, try to work out, make sure that you can still meet the standards for the branch of the military that you're looking to join. Uh, do a lot of studying, right? Try to get a little bit of time in to get familiarized with maybe the rank structure, maybe certain you know drill and ceremonies type of things, maybe things to make it a little bit easier with this time. You have this time now to kind of prepare and get yourself ready for basic training and get yourself ready for initial training for whatever branch you want to join and just making sure you're fit, educated, and mentally prepared the best that you can. So right now, if you're waiting to go to basic training, definitely start working on getting yourself physically ready and mentally preparing yourself with video uh, videos like Christopher Chaos's, myself and others who are on social media, uh, who you know provide a ton of insight on what to expect at basic training. So that'll help you get ready mentally. I'm recommending that you work out a minimum of four to six days out of the week with three days mandatory designated for cardio, meaning you're running. In three days that you could either do uh, body weight exercises or lifting weights. Running is probably the biggest thing I would tell you to work on prior to leaving outside of push-ups, sit-ups, and squats at minimum. So for the Army, I cannot speak for the other branches, the Army, US Army Recruiting Command is still open. We're open, we're still functioning kind of like the saying goes you know the army keeps rolling along despite whatever happens or obstacle happens so we are open virtually uh, via facetime phone call social media youtube ig facebook and so on and so forth the u.s army esports has been putting out a lot of stuff u.s army uh wire fitness team the crossfit team has been putting out a lot of stuff you know to tell you guys what the army has to offer army story and pretty much being ambassadors for the army and sending out the message virtually office recruiting stations and the meps where i'm at again it varies where you live are closed because you cannot be in a place with more than 10 people and if imagine if you work at the maps there's going to be a lot of people coming in from different places okay so right now you can contact your local army recruiter or chisel especially if you're in the bay area california we can start doing the initial interview online via FaceTime, video call, whatever. Start building the packet. We can give you the practice test. We can give you the real ASVAB online at the comfort of your home. As long as you don't use your calculator, you can definitely do your ASVAB. Just no cheating because it's your ASVAB score and it's going to determine what your jobs 
or what MOSU will qualify for for the Army. So definitely, yes, you can start the process and as soon as all the ban, all the travel bans and basically shelter in place has been lifted, you can finally enlist and process at the MEPS because they will be open. But yes, you can still enlist, you can still join, keep studying, keep doing home workouts just to get ready, you know, for the actual enlistment day. So I hope you enjoyed this fun little collaboration video. Big, 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 big thanks to all of the awesome individuals that volunteered to take part in this fun video for you guys. If you are not subscribed to those individuals, go down to the description area. You'll find the links to their channels. Check them out. If you like what they are creating, subscribe to them. They are great individuals that create great content that I think you will enjoy, especially if you're someone that either wants to join the Army, maybe the Navy, maybe you're just interested in the military in general. Those individuals provide great, great content. So if you enjoyed this video, of course, hit that thumbs up. Maybe even think about sharing it. Maybe there's some friends out there that would like to see this type of content. Maybe they'd like to see some of these other individuals that participate in this video, giving their answers on these kind of isolation questions and everything. So maybe think about doing that. And then, of course, down in the description area, I got links to my social media and everything. But more importantly, links to all those awesome individuals that participate in this video. So go check out their YouTube channels as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos. I'll see you next time. See ya. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Arches out. Chris, if I come to Colorado, we're gonna we're gonna link up. If you guys want Chris Chaos to come on a video of mine, let me know down in Chris's video down here, and we'll figure something out. See y'all next time.